Welcome to Cafe Tele's live broadcast, standard operating procedure. Uh, I'm Russell Lundberg. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Today, I thought I'd talk to you about modeling, uh, telecoms modeling with Excel. And we're going to start out pretty simple um, so that we know what we're talking about here. I'm going to share my screen. I'll keep myself down in the corner, but I'm going to share. I got to share the whole thing with. Uh, yeah. And I'll pop over to Excel. OK, so um, first I'm just going to start with some basics. Some really simple uh, techniques for uh, modeling. Uh, now, what is modeling? Of course, modeling is just a way to uh, to forecast or predict some uh, outcomes based upon changing inputs or different inputs. Uh, often, you'll be given a, a challenge, uh, maybe uh, you know, by a circuit. Uh, by a circuit or um, by a piece of hardware that does something similar um, and your job is to compare which is the longer term better deal. You know, the recurring cost of a circuit, you know, monthly recurring cost of a circuit versus the one time cost and any maintenance charges associated with buying a piece of equipment. For example, uh, leased voice, leased lines for voice uh, versus um, getting a, a VoIP device, a, 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 a transcoder or something like that, um, what, which is the better option? So uh, a model is how you determine that. You figure out which one is the better option, and, uh, uh, and then you can present your results to your boss or to your team or whoever's asking. So let me zoom that out a little bit. Okay, we're at a... 130%, let's go a little bit more, 140, there you go. So modeling, I mean, let's take a really simple example. Um, let's calculate the area of a square. Let's hope that's basically square. Basically square, okay. So area of the square, of course, everybody knows it's length times height. All right, that's the area of a square. So you can do it like this. I mean, it's a pretty simple formula, right? Uh, it's a square, so this, they're the same. So you could do power. That's the power function, uh, the number. And the second argument is what your power you're raising it to. So that's nine. Um, but look at the formula. Let's do a general case of where it's a rectangle. Now they're going to be different. So now you're going to do uh, Uh, another case here is a uh, square. So the it's again length times height, right? But if you get it complicated, if I actually do that, it's going to be uh, say five times eight, right? So you can do it like that, but that's never good practice to embed a, a raw number or a naked number into a formula. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is uh, you may not, the next time you look at it, you may not remember why you chose those numbers. Of course, this is such a simple example that may not apply here, but in your normal work, you may end up with a formula that's a little bit complicated and you might not remember why there's a five in there or an eight, or if you're dealing with months of the year, why there's a 12 in there, right? So it's better to always call out any naked numbers so that you can give them a name and describe them 
So when you come back and look at it or when somebody else looks at your work, they'll be able to follow along. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to send a chat message in case somebody actually joins. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to our workbook. So what I'm going to do is let's say, let's make this the length. And let's say the length is three, right? And the width. Uh, yeah. Width is seven. Right? Well, it's the easiest thing is just make those named ranges. So I can click up here and paste that label. Can I not paste that label? And this is width. Okay, so here's the deal now. Um, all the Office, Microsoft Office applications running on a Mac, I use Apple products, um, are pretty badly broken. And on a Windows box, last week on my Apple box, I could copy and paste a name like this, copy it, copy it, and paste it here to create a named range. <laughs> but it won't let me do that now. All the Microsoft Office products are broken on Apple. I can't paste there at all. That's awesome. Thanks, Microsoft. Okay, so now I've got two named ranges, right? So a better way to do this instead of just the raw numbers is I use the wrong one. We'll do it again using the uh, shortcut. That way you can still didn't do it. What a piece. So this should be width. I did that. Thanks. So length times the shortcut to pull up this dialog box is um, function F3. So now it's a pretty easy to read formula. In fact, it's just like we started out. I changed the names, right? But it's really easy. So this is a really simple formula. For a more complex formula, it's kind of nice to use named ranges because then it reads more like English. You don't have to figure out what it means. And you also, because it's a named range, you don't have to remember what those values are, right? So... Um, and let's do good uh, best practices. Uh, always give these, use your branded color scheme, you know, whatever color scheme you normally use, let's always use that. So I like the light blue background and a uh, dark blue font, yeah, for my labels. And of course, formulas, I always use a light purple for uh, input. That's what I like. A little kind of a, a soft yellow to reminds me that there's input there. I can even do it down here. But that yellow barely shows up down here. So I usually, for the tab color, I go with the web safe yellow. It's easier to see in the tab color. Okay, so this is a way to create formulas, right? That's pretty straightforward. Um, let me check my notes here. Yeah, so length and width. Uh, now it's easy to, if I wanted to, um, I 
could do a volume, right? I could do a volume now, simply add that here. How deep is it? There's the actual formula, makes it easier to see. And then if I just add an equal sign, we'll get the value. So again, that's a pretty easy formula to read. Length times width times depth, there's not much question about what's going on. Whereas if you had a formula like this, three times seven times four, what's that formula? It's really, there's no information other than the raw values themselves. So let's not do that. If you can, when you have a complicated formula, if possible. Now, if you're doing fills, and we'll show that, uh, maybe not today, but um, when you have, you know, like you're showing the values for 12 months, it's hard. it makes no sense to name each cell in a 12-month range, right? And because it's 12 months, there'll be date labels. Everybody will be able to figure that out. Um, so I thought what we do today is um, – Well, excuse me. So with dates, let me show you another uh, a forecast I've done in the past. And what you see on screen here is here's your date intervals. Right from uh, January of 21 out to December of 45. It goes a long way. Yeah, 24 years. Right. Um, And it's easy to do this in Excel with, you know, you can use fill. You put the first couple, three dates, and then you can just drag it and you'll get it. But the challenge, so let's set, let's set that up here. So approach one. And this is going to be um, enter date and fill. So enter the date and then fill right. So here's your date say January 1, there's today's dates, not very well, uh, so let's give that a format so it looks like something useful and I like this format. That's the format I usually use. And if I just drag to the right, it Excel will automatically increment the day. Yeah, but I want to increment months. So this would be two, one. Now that I've got two, let's see if it'll do it for me. Sure. All right, so there's, sorry. Let me zoom that in a little bit. There are 12, 13 months. And I just entered the first date and then fill, fill to the right, and everything populates, right? So that would be my date headers for whatever I'm going to put into this model. But invariably what happens when you're creating a model is, you know, it's an iterative process. You kind of... You think about it, you create something, you put it down, you come back to it tomorrow or next week, and you think about it some more, and you add some things, to change some things, you improve it, you refine it, right? And what else happens out there in the real world <laughs> is, you know, whatever your start date is will change. Somebody will tell you, oh, it's going to start in, well, since now is January, I might say it's going to start February 1st, right? So I'd have to come back here in 3 one and then I got to do two of them, right? Four, one, twenty-one. Now I have to fill again. Okay, so now I just changed my start date. Let's do it a better way, right? Now that's pretty easy, but this way 
is extra work and it limits your flexibility because you have to change the model itself to change that date. So what we'll do is, uh, is we're going to set an external start date and then we're going to create the range based upon that external start date. Okay, so here's approach two. Approach two. An external start date. So uh, I always put my uh, my formulas, pardon me, I always put my variables or formulas, uh, variables out to the side. So let's just say start date. And the date, let's say it's going to be, I've got three March, sorry, one March. And uh, I'm going to do my labels. And then this is a input. Right. So now this is my start date. Here's my start date. Uh, so there's my start date to first of March. Now I want to now create the start date. Here it is. So how do I create that programmatically or using a formula? That's our date function. And then the shortcut is function F3. Oh, I didn't give it a shortcut. Let's do that. So there's my, huh, why does it work here? What did I do wrong? So this is now my start date. So using that date function, first argument is the year. And the argument to year is going to be our state day, start date. And then the second argument is the month. Same thing, start date. So there's my start date. Um, and now how do I fill to the right? Well, if I just fill to the right, it doesn't do anything because it's a formula. What I'm going to do though, is I want one month, right? I want to add one month for every column. Well, here's one way to do that. I mean, here you would have, I want to add a month. So it's zero plus zero here. I'm plus one. I could do it again where the argument is plus two, right? And now I could try to fill it, but that also doesn't work because Excel doesn't read that embedded number. Remember when I talked about back here with basics, hard coding a number doesn't work very good and you can't use the fill handle. So if we come back to our date function and say, we want to increment for every column, we want to increment the month by one. Well, that's the columns function, columns function. I'm going to show you that. So that's columns function. I think it's just, I think there's the argument, yeah. So let's try that, equal C-O-L-S and uh, I-18, doesn't really matter, I-18. Okay, it's not calls, it's columns. Yeah, so columns returns the count of the number of columns in the argument. So we've got a, a one cell argument to the columns, so it returns one, right? If I make that a range, and I'm going to do function F4, it puts those dollar signs in there to anchor the range. 
and then it's I-18 again. Let's fill that down so you can see it a little better and then remove. So now I've got a range there. I-18 to I-19. I just wanted 18. And I'll add my equal sign so it will now calculate that. Now it returned to 1 because there's still only one cell in that range, cell I-18. But now if I fill it down, sorry, it's the columns argument. I have to be careful there. If it's the columns argument, it, it's the count of the number of columns. If I fill down, it's still going to be 1 because it's all column I, right? Column I. What I want, though, is columns. I got to fill it to the right. So if I do this, you can see it increments by one for every new column. Sorry, I got to turn off the heating. It's quite loud. Sorry about that. That'll pop off in just a second. So many moving parts to do these. A lot of uh, a lot of moving parts. So now I can, without typing these numbers, I can increment automatically. So let's try this again. I'm just going to delete these because we didn't use that, right? So uh, so it's this again, and here's the. Well, for simplicity, I can just do. <laughs> I'm just going to copy and paste. Right. And now. Here's my first month. And I want to link to these columns argument. And it's. Plus this, but that's not quite right. Because my start date is March, is 1 March, and I now have 1 April. So I need to subtract 1 from my columns argument. So to account for that, I want the first date in my range of dates to be exactly the start date. But I, I want to embed this columns row so that the formula is the same in the whole range. I didn't say that very well. Let me just show you. Uh, minus, well, this is just minus one. And then when I fill it right, starts at zero, but it still increments one for every column. So now this is correct. And if I fill this to the right, it'll do what I want it to do. That is, increment one month. And the way we're doing that can I paste the formula? Yeah. And I'm going to do that. There's the actual formula. And right there, I'm adding in I-20. I didn't want to increment that. Is that right? So that's the formula. And because it's a range, I-20 right there, when I fill right, Excel is going to increment that column. And so it works. And here's another way that'll work. You don't need, you know, in a complex model, you're going to end up with lots of stuff. You may not need a, an external row that does this incrementation. You may. Um, so I'm going to show you both ways. If you if you have other formulas in your model that also need that incrementing month, this uh, row 20, I would leave it like this. But if you don't, if it's only to get the proper date advance, I would change it here. Like this. Just replace that. And don't forget, you want to subtract one. And if I now turn that into a formula, it 
wasn't sure what that noise was. Uh, I wanted 20. My row is 20, yeah? Except I didn't put the equal sign in. Get that format straight. And now I don't need this row. <laughs> uh, I'm so confused. So it still works, but I don't have that. I can delete. doesn't matter. I'm not using those values. Yeah. My dates are still correct. I'll leave that up there, though. So that's how you can automatically. And the advantage of this approach is it's use start date. So let me scroll back to the left here. Now, when... You know, the start date moves to the right. Oh, okay, it's going to be in April. Now, my entire range updated. What happens if it goes to next year? Changes automatically. All I did was have to change this value, and the rest of my model is automatically incrementing. So that's a key point that I really want you to understand. We pull out of our model any variable which might reasonably change so that if it does change or if we choose to change it, we can do so without messing with the model. We don't have to edit the model. We don't have to change any cells in the model. And there's really where you have an opportunity to add value as a telecom pro anticipate what values might change in the model and account for that potential change so that the change can be shown without messing with the model. And here's what you want to avoid. You're given a presentation to the boss or, you know, you're the head of your department or whatever, something important. And they ask a question. You don't want to have to be editing their model Excuse me. You don't want to have to edit your model right there in front of them to answer their question. If you can simply change a value, that tells that person, the boss, that not only can you answer the question, what happens if I make this change? But it also tells them that, ah, oh, you anticipated that question and structured your model appropriately. That look that makes you look very good. That's that's what you're trying to do. Uh, certainly, you want to get the right answer, right? I mean, you want to be able to answer that question. But by doing so properly, you also tell the audience that you know what you're doing. You anticipated their question and structured your model appropriately. What do you think about that? That's a great way to build your career. And thinking about models in this way to abstract out key dates, it's a very good thing to do. Uh, we're at 30 minutes. I usually spend an hour on this. Um, so let's do a little more here. Something else that you might do with your model, and it even it applies to a date. So... Uh, let's create a, another layer of abstraction for that start date. Um, so I've created, I've labeled two more cells. And let's say the project was supposed to begin on, um, well, we started with uh, 1 January 21. And I would flag that as kind of a hard code, right? Purple, don't change this. And I would make this one 
I want a layer of abstraction. What I'm trying to do here is a default value or the possibility to override the default and the model will use the default if there's no override. But if there's an override, use that. Okay, so I should say override start date. That'll be a little more clear, yeah? And for my override start, let's, we could use, now to take advantage of that, and that's, that's input, so I've got to change my color. To take advantage of that, now I have a conditional. And what I said is, this is the default, this is the override. So there's, there's different ways to express that using Excel, but it's the if function. So equals if, if there's a value for the override, use it. Otherwise, use the default. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to remove the equal sign so it's easier to see. So here's that formula. And remember, the if function has three arguments. If the condition is met, that's argument one, the condition or the expression. If the expression is true, that's number one. Expression, if the expression is two, is the second argument. If the expression is false, the third argument. So expression, case if true, case if false. And what I've got is B4. So here's B4. Sorry. Yeah, here's B4. Uh, it's confusing because I've pulled it down a row. Uh, I actually wanted... It's B3. It'll be easier to read if I get that straight. more sensible. So all this says is B3. And B3, by default, if it's a number, if there's a number there, it's true. Non-zero number is true. If I come back here and add a zero, I can make it false. Yeah. But otherwise, if it's blank or zero, it's false. So it will use the default. Right? So the first one, the expression B3. Just a naked B3, all it's going to do is if it's a non-zero number, that's true. Otherwise, it's false. I think if I type in text. Yeah. So if the if function by default, it'll test, it'll test a number. But if it's not a number, it doesn't know what to do. So that's going to be an error. So this will be if, if it's blank, if the override is blank or zero, use the default. Otherwise, use the override. So now, oh, it uses my override, and that's a formula, so we should flag it, color code it. There you go. So now, you've got your model set up. Here's your preferred or your your you know, your initial start date, and you built in an override. Good stuff, yeah? Um, so I said in my model, each column is a month. What if it's not a month? What if it was a quarter? Well, a quarter is three months, right? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do too, right? So now, <laughs> G here. Now, still have the same formula. Still works, yeah. I better fix that though. That'll I'm sure that'll bother me later. 
filling down, I incremented my row number. And I don't think it'll matter in this case, but if I ignore it, it'll start to matter. <laughs> I think that's Murphy's Law, yeah. And that's still using row 20. We should change that. So let's just, let's do that quick. Uh, that you oh because it's anchored sure so that's I twenty four I, I want to use it over so I don't erase what I've already done uh, anybody who wants to download this workbook they can um, so now the same thing will work but what do I do here I can either increment so what i want to do i'm going to use quarters right two choices i can embed the calculation to for each column make it three months that's a quarter right three months every three months is a quarter of a year or i can put that up up here what do you think we should do Upstairs neighbors have a child. Uh, uh, so let's try the first case where it's a quarter, right? Yeah. So I think for the point of this exercise, I want to dig into this just a little bit because it, it's a good way to illustrate how you want to think about a model. You're trying to abstract out things that change, right? So this is just a date. Up here, we're not hard coding the initial assumption that every column was a month. Now I said, well, what if the every column was a quarter? So now I've I've hard coded and I can fix that, right? So you might say uh, right, just to avoid hard coding. I don't know why that's working now and it wasn't before and that is uh input it's a three it's not an input you can't change the number of months in a quarter okay months in a quarter so instead of hard coding that three i can put months per quarter and now it reads really nice and i wish it see excel keeps trying to help me there and now i get the same value right um and down here, since I call out, I don't want to hard code that. Oh yeah, let's talk about that here in a minute. So up here where I have my date and I'm using the call out, right? That approach, it's just plus, see this, in this, in this example, I copied the formula that actually embedded the columns and the math inside the formula. I want to do this. So that's still correct, but when I fill to the right, it it's correctly using this. Yeah. Well, that's with quarters, right? Each column is a day or a week or a year, right? 
Now what do we do? Again, this is this is modeling. <laughs> so one of the things we're going to model is you can choose whether the interval each column is a month or a quarter or a day or a week. So if, I mean, just to kind of scribble that out here a little bit, interval. Uh, duration. Oh, I want to do that. I didn't look at this. So what happens to me is that my thinking gets ahead of my pre preparation. Um, this is not the one where I've done that either. Uh, I'm going to back off on that because it's too complicated. Here's the complication is in this example, I'm adding one for each column. I'm adding one to the month or for the case of the quarter for each column. I'm adding three to the month. If I, uh, if I change the, the, the dimension is months. If I change it to weeks, so uh, we did months, quarters, the dimension is month, month. But if I do two days, the dimension is day. Three years, and I would lose some precision if I used days for all of them, right? This would be, what would this be, 30, 90, 91, I think on average, but that's inaccurate. Really, the issue is back to the date function. Copy some notes here. Remember last week I talked about branding. This is my note style. Ugly and gross as it is, that's my note style. So what I wanted to do is copy the date function. Yeah, I knew that happened. I need to reset the, uh, when you paste, Excel's always helping. And, uh, oh, it's the font is uh, automatic. Thank you. Okay, there's the date function. That's a little easier to see, yeah? That's too much. Oh, Excel. Okay, so there's the date function. So if the interval is months, I'm going to, here, you can see I'm adding to the months, right? If it's quarters, I add to the months. But what if my interval is a day? There's, I can't add to the, to the months. I'd want it out here. So it's possible to do this with Excel. Um, I think it's rare that you'll need to, and I, I like the, <laughs> I like using it to illustrate the point here of, you know, making your model really flexible, but at some point there's a, you know, it becomes a little absurd to, um, to, to take every possible, uh, output or outcome in, in, into consideration, um, simply as a way to, as a teaching exercise, I think it's too complicated because you'd have to, you know, some kind of lookup. If it's months or quarters, okay, use a date function where you modify the month argument. 
If it's days, use a date function where you modify the day argument. And if it's years, use a date function where you modify the years argument. I mean, it's possible, but it's a little bit complicated. And um, I think that's probably a little bit more than we wanted to get started with here. Uh, I'm going to recap, though. The really important things are, I would say, is any variable that is likely to change in your model, do anticipate that change, call it out separately, make that value a named range and use that name in your, in your model, like start date, right? Think about abstracting away a default value versus a override value or a manually inputted value so that you can take advantage of that. In, when you're pre the example I gave was you, when you're presenting to the boss or the boss's boss or the department head or something, you not only want to have thought of the things he's thinking of, she's thinking of, but you also want to have abstracted them out so that you can change them right there on the fly. And the date may not be the best example of that, but you can come up with lots of examples. You know, what if you assume a one gigabit per second uh, bandwidth and the boss says, oh, that's going to have to be 10 gigabits. We'll just type in a 10 and it should work, right? Abstract those values out and make them user changeable without editing the model itself. All you're doing is changing the input values. Your model should still work. And, and that's our challenge as telecom pros is to think through the model well enough so that any reasonable change the audience might suggest, um, you, can, you can demonstrate. And I know everybody's busy. If you have a little time, you can be willing to contemplate an unreasonable change uh, because, you know, I'm sure you've had a boss like this that would come up with something kind of, well, let's be clear, nutty, just to kind of wrong foot you, you know, that's how some bosses show that they're the boss. You know, you didn't think of this and I did. Okay. It, it's, you know, it would be, I'm not sure that would be good for your career <laughs> if he, the boss tries to wrong foot you and you had anticipated that. I'm not sure how that would go. Have to think about that. Okay, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, if you've got any questions, um, if you've got a model that you've been working on and would like some help, uh, send me an email or a direct message and uh, we'll figure out how we can work together on it. I'd, be, I'd love, to have, love to help you try and work that out. Um, and uh, join us next week. We'll go to the next level here. This was just really one aspect. We'll push on this a little more and, and do some more work on it so that uh, you'll be better at modeling and uh, well on your way to loving a career in telecoms. Thanks a lot for supporting Cafe Tele. See you next time. Bye-bye.